That's it. Okay? So, <clears throat> when the court keeps a record of the proceedings, that's all it's doing. Now, <clears throat> I'm sure everyone here is familiar with the word patient. You know, a doctor's patient. Now, does an auto mechanic have patients? No. He has customers, right? <clears throat> does a lawyer have patients? No. He has clients. Okay? Only a doctor has patients. The, the doctors own the word patient. Okay? That is specifically associated with their profession. The word client is in this, just like the word patient is owned by doctors, the word client is owned by attorneys. A client is somebody with whom you have an attorney client relationship, okay, and you can make decisions for him. <clears throat> okay, you have control of his life. Power of attorney, that's exactly right. And so a licensed attorney has a higher level of attorney relationship than a normal power of attorney would have, okay? Because he can actually follow through in court, in, in the existing courts. So the attorneys own the word client. It is not proper to say, for example, an, an accountant does not have clients. They say it all the time but that's an abuse of the word. The original proper legal meaning of the word client is as it's used in relation to an attorney. Now the word record is owned by a court of record. Equity courts do not keep records. Even though everything looks the same, they are not properly called records, okay? That's why they call them docket sheets. Okay? They're called docket sheets. They're dockets because they're not records. Or what do they call it? There's another name I've been coming across now. Transcript. Uh, not transcript, but uh, uh, I think it's something about actions. Uh, I forget anyway, but anyway, they have actions, uh, listings of actions, okay? And, and because they're not records. Only a court of record keeps records. The word record is properly only, only used when talking about the decisions and, and proposals that are made in a court of record. That's it, that's what a real record is. Equity yeah. courts do not keep records? That's correct. Okay. They may keep notes, they have, they have a list of actions that were taken, but those are not properly called records. Now, all right, so the court of record is the one court. Now, if you look at the Constitution, let's, let's go back to the Constitution, specifically Article 3. Oh. I know. Ram Thai. It's not and the thing that I want you to notice is that when you're up close anyway, the stripes go this way. Yes. The stripes do not go the other way. Okay, that's not an accident. I select this tie based on the stripes. You want to do a close up? Okay. Then you're telling me you're the passenger, not the driver. I should have, I should have perhaps worn a more obvious tie, but anyway, the stripes go like you're reaching for your sword. The sword was worn on the left side, and you reach across, you pull it out, you're ready to do battle, okay? So the sovereigns, when you look at the no parking signs, you know you have the circle with the stripe? The stripe goes the same way. That's an order from the sovereign, okay? That, that stripe is the sovereign. Now, if you go the other way, that would be from a subject, okay? So, so that from, from right to the left? Yeah, from the up, upper right shoulder to the lower left hip. Yeah, but and you'll see when they when when at uh, public affairs and they these uh, uh, metal happy public officials 
and they have these wide strips going across. That's the way they go across, this way, because they're representing the sovereign authority. Those sashes? Yeah, the sashes, but they go the other way, not the way you indicated. Right. And so that, um, if you go to court and you put on a suit and tie, please make sure the stripes go the right, the right way. If the stripes go the right way, it's pretty meaningless. But if the stripes go the wrong way, number one, and number two, if the judge is educated, he'll know you're ignorant. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you have the stripes go the right way, he doesn't know. He has no way of knowing if you're ignorant or not. He has to use other criteria. If he knows what he's doing and he's in tune with those concepts and you have a tie going the wrong way, he knows you don't know what you're talking about. You're not really sovereign. Heraldry is that the stripes going that way represent the sovereignty. Okay. Now, when uh, uh, if you if you pay attention to these details and you're aware of it, you, you can see this in operation. Now, here's an interesting thing. <clears throat> when the United States was founded, um, well, let me just say this: in England. The stripes go the other way. Everybody who wears a tie in, in England, the stripes go the other way. Now about 40 years ago, I noticed something. I noticed that here in the United States, they started introducing neutral ties. Okay? And over a 10 year period, I saw the number of striped ties that went this way kind of go down a bit and more neutral ties were available. For about a 10 year period, after that, the, the second 10 years, I noticed they introduced ties with stripes going the other way in the American market. And then in the last, in the third 10 years, I noticed that you had to hunt all over the place to find a tie with a stripe that went this way. What are they doing? They're Europeanizing the United States. They're trying to convert our system over to their system. You see, when we broke away from England, we, we said, Everybody is a sovereign. So everybody wore a tie with the stripes going this way. There are people who understood these things. Okay, these were the outward signs. And I know it seems frivolous. Okay? No, I mean, it, it does, in a way, it is frivolous. I mean, it, what difference does a stripe make, you know, in terms of who and what you are? But remember, people look at you and judge you. And if you understand these subtleties, then you have a better chance of getting what you want out of the system. Because even though you cannot tell them how smart you are, you can avoid telling them how dumb you are. Okay? So don't wear a tie with a stripe going the other way. Not when you go to court. All right? You never know who's up on that bench. Okay? Don't believe anything I tell you. You verify it. If somebody gives you a case, how many times, I don't know how well, I don't know how deep you do your research, but how many times has somebody given you a case that was absolutely said exactly what you needed, and you went and you looked it up and you couldn't even find the words in the case? Yeah. <laughs> All right? Check everything. I don't care how reliable the person seems to you. Check everything. Do not accept anything from anybody without checking it, and that includes me. I want to talk about the officers of the court. The officers of court, that, that's nothing special. All that is is people who have jobs, okay? They have different functions. So I can represent some of those functions. Like, for example, I think I got one here. Who do you think this represents? The court clerk. A surfer. <laughs> when, the, when the clerk takes the day off, he goes surfing. So you see, the court clerk, he has his own hat, right? And you recognize it right away. Somebody said it before I said it, okay? So that's one of the jobs. Let's see, what other jobs do we have here? Here we go. Here's a nice one. No, that's the, the attorney, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he wears that hat. Okay. Now, 
No powdered wig. <laughs> we gotta get another prop for you, Bill. <laughs> That's right, the court jester. See, you know your you know your court structure. 